make seven figures working in tech? According to these articles, apparently you can do anything, seven figures and above. But is this real? Is this accurate? You might be asking yourself. Today, I'm going to be sitting down with you and breaking down what exactly are these articles trying to get at? Not only just that, but well, actually before I even get there, I really wanna share, this isn't a get rich quick kind of thing, or I'm really, really against that, but rather this video is the opposite. I wanna inform you and give you the knowledge that you are prepared when you are either entering the tech industry or searching for your next job and what that really consists of so you don't get skewed by these crazy articles. I want to break down with you today tech compensation. So what that really entails, what to be aware of. And I also want to break down with you what exactly these articles are trying to get at, at least when it means making a lot of money working in tech and where I would say the majority of people do make a lot of money in tech. Now, listen, it's not everyone. There's a lot of normal paying jobs in tech, but I really want to kind of break down or demystify. Is that a word? Demystify? Yeah. I feel like I need glasses for that word. Demystify the tech industry and compensation. Okay, let's get to it. All right, let's get to compensation and what it really entails. I'm outside because it's one of the last nice days before it snows here in Toronto. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. It won't snow for a while, but it gets cold quickly as a Canadian. All right, if you want more information as well on uh, compensation, total compensation, I definitely suggest you check out Levels FYI. You've probably heard me mention this quite a few times and it's because I absolutely love the resource, mainly because they break down total compensation by location, by company, and by years of experience and by different roles. So you can get really exact as to what you should expect. All right, let's jump into base salary. Base salary is a fixed amount of salary that you get for showing up at work. Well, maybe you have to do a little bit more than just show up, but it's something that is consistent that you get. You know you are starting with when you are hired, you know the exact amount, and it's something that doesn't change. Now, when I say it doesn't change, of course, as you grow with the company and in your role or to a new role, your base salary typically will go up. And it's also important to note that base salary isn't affected by how well the company is doing. If a company is doing really well, your base salary typically doesn't go up. And if they start not doing so well, it's not going to go down. Also, something that's really important to note here is you will never become rich. And I use that in quotations because it depends on your definition of rich, but you will never become rich, I guess you could say, off of base salary. Typically, you know, you're not going to, typically people don't make a seven figure base salary. I'm not saying it's impossible. Of course, there are companies where the C-level people will make that, but on average, don't count on your base salary for what makes you rich. It's gonna, it can pay a lot, high, high six figures, but it's not going to take you to that next level. Now let's talk about bonuses. Bonuses are usually paid on a semi-annual basis, and this can vary company to company. Bonuses also can change based on what role you are in. I would say there are typically three things that can really affect your bonus. So one is level of seniority. Uh, usually is taken into account for how much bonus you are getting. Of course, the more senior you are, typically the bigger bonus you get. Another thing is, of course, performance. Bonus is really closely related to performance. How well are you performing within the company? What results are you showing? And once again, that can vary role to role. Of course, if you are in something like sales, your bonus is probably going to be very important. Whereas if you're in engineering, it's still important, but it might not look the same. The structure might be different. And then the third one is company performance. And once again, doesn't mean for every company, but a lot of companies include that in for the bonus as well to really help employees kind of believe in the company. Okay, let's talk equity in stocks. And equity in stocks, especially equity, is something that really differentiates, I would say, most industries and the tech industry. Now, that's not to say always. I feel like for everything I have to put a disclaimer, and I'm gonna stop doing that. Of course, there's always buts and ifs and all of that, but at the end of the day, we're talking about tech here, and I think more important than not is uh, there's always different use cases. I'm talking in general. Definitely equity though is something that really sets the tech industry apart. It's something that's a huge part of the tech industry. And I think it's really because there are so many startups that really include equity. So what exactly does equity even mean? To be honest, it's something that when I was getting into tech, I really had no idea what it meant. And I was like, ah, just kind of living life really irresponsibly, not knowing how compensation was broken down, what it really entailed, what I should be asking for and what I should expect. 
And that's why I think this video is so important, by the way. So what does equity really mean? Well, it means a share of the company. It signifies ownership and really motivates employees to work in the best interest of the company. And how equity works is it usually vests over a period of time. So typically I would say four to five years and it can vest equally every month, quarter or year. So what does that even mean? Well, think of it like this. A vesting cliff means the minimum period of time before your vestings begins. For example, if you are granted 4,800 shares over a four year schedule with a one year cliff and in monthly investing, you will get 1,200 shares at the end of your first year and 100 shares every month thereafter for three years. Okay, that was a lot to digest and I had to write that down in order to speak it. But I guess what I'm trying to say is not all equity is treated the same and it's not distributed the same. The timelines are all different. What I would suggest you to do and what I did when I started looking into equity and stocks and what does that all really mean is, well, I was kind of lucky because my partner is really good friends with a very, very high up uh, stockbroker. So they were able to really help guide me through the difficult questions and what questions to ask a company. But if you don't have that resource, I would suggest you spend some time really looking into equity and what it means and, and what the averages are. And I'll link some resources down below that really will help as well. Okay, let's talk stock. Stock options are typically given by mid-stage companies. Stock options are usually the option or right or slash right to purchase stocks at a given price. and. It's not free, it's not something that's just handed to you. And I found some companies kind of try and sell it to you that way and then you get in the contract stage or reading contracts, whether it's been in my case or I've had friends that this happened to and they're like, no, 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 it's not for free. You're not just giving me something, but they really sometimes try and work it in as though they are giving you the stock. It's not the case, it's not the case. So what it really means is you are guaranteed to be able to purchase the stock at the price regardless of the future increases. So of course, if you're working at a company that you really believe in, you can purchase X amount of stock and you know that it's going to go up. Well, no, you never know, but you really believe it will, you really hope it will. That's what it comes down to with stock. And then we have signing bonuses. Signing bonuses aren't with every company, but they're with a lot. And what they really entail is a one-time lump sum that you get when you are signing on with a company. Now, the funny thing about signing bonuses is uh, more often than not, you don't get them on your first paycheck or second paycheck. They are distributed, I would say, th either throughout the year, throughout first six months. It's not just like a one lump sum kind of thing. Sometimes people or companies do signing bonuses that once you are off probation, then you get the signing bonus. So it's not as though you sign the contract and then you get the bonus. And of course, that is because I'm sure at one point in time, people were signing contracts getting the signing bonus and then being like, bye. Okay, Tiffany, this is not helping me get my seven figures. You're teaching me about compensation, which is great and it's very needed, but let's go back to the articles. How am I gonna make a million dollars as an employee? I'm so glad you asked. Well, the reality is you're probably not, definitely not in the short term. I think if you are someone who is really interested in really, uh, acquiring a lot of money when you are working in tech, one of the best ways to do it that I have seen people do it successfully is you have to play the game, play the long game. I think that's what it is, play the long game. Well, what does that mean? As I mentioned earlier, your base salary, whether you jump around companies every year or two years, yes, it will go up a few X amount, whether it be 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, but it's not going to be life altering typically where you do have the opportunity to make quite a bit of money, I would say, is through stock and equity. Now, the thing is, if you are going to be jumping around company to company a lot, it's going to be hard to really acquire a lot of that in a short period of time. One of my friends who is a cybersecurity engineer, she was, I think, employee number 49 or 50. She was under uh, the first 100 employees to get hired at Shopify. And she was with them, grew with them for many, many years. And by the time she left, everything that she had invested in the company, uh, she was able to buy a gorgeous home with it and do a ton of other things. So stories like that go back to my example that it's not about your base salary, it's about other factors. It's about the stock, it's about the equity and what you choose to do with that. Now the thing is some companies that you are at, you're kind of taking a bet in a way. You have to really believe in the company you're at and that they will succeed. In turn, you will succeed because if you're with a company you're like, this is not going to go anywhere or this is just not for me, then you're gonna A, hate your life and B, 
you're not going to see your ROI on it as far as, uh, you know, obviously your base salary you will or you might, but in other ways you might not. So my best advice to you, if you are someone who really wants to reflect what these articles are saying or anything like that is to play the long game, meaning pick a company that you really believe in, that you truly want to grow with, invest in it, not just, I'm not talking financially, but I'm talking just like with something that you really believe in with yourself, with your work, with growing the company. And this doesn't have to be necessarily a startup. This could be a medium sized company. It could be even a large company that you just want to grow within. And through that, that is where the other part of this financial side that people keep on talking about, you will find. And once again, this is not a get rich quick kind of video or look how much money you can make. It's kind of the opposite. I just wanna be very clear here that you're not going to become this billionaire by having a really high base salary. You're just not. It's great to have a good base salary and whatnot, but there's so much more to it than that. And that's why I want to spend time really breaking down what compensation can entail. And I say can because different companies incorporate different parts of it. Maybe one company doesn't offer a signing bonus. Maybe one company doesn't offer stock, different things like that. But it's important to understand and be aware of it. So when you are going into the situation of A, getting your first job or your 10th job, but you haven't done the research, then it's gonna be really hard for you to be able to ask these questions and understand what it all entails. Whereas if you have done your research, you understand each part, you can confidently go into these interviews or conversations knowing what questions you should be asking. Okay, I think that's a, a day's a day's work for me, all in a day. All in a day, is that what they say? I'm really bad with these things. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and found it very helpful and useful. Uh, it's something that I wish I would have had someone connect with me on when I was first getting into the tech industry. And I had to do a lot of research on my own to get there and it's, it's complex and it's complicated and, and it seems overwhelming at first, but when someone breaks it down for you in a really relaxed and easy to understand way, I hope you will, it will click for you like it did for me. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding and career videos. Leave in the comments, what other videos do you want me to make? Because how I truly make my videos is based on what you want to see, based on your questions and your feedback. And I'll see you all soon. Bye everyone.